we got Alex Morono back here on the program. He's going to be fighting at UFC Fight Night 141 on November 24th in Beijing. Alex, what's going on, man? How are you? Good, good. I got one more week of training left, man. I'm ready to Far East and do some damage. Yeah, another fight outside of the United States. Uh, are you liking this? Do you like getting the frequent flyer miles, or are you hoping for something close to home next time? Uh, in the beginning, I was like, I would fight anywhere. I love traveling around planet Earth fighting guys, but uh, this is like, I think, my third one now. Not in a row, but, you know, traveling to a different country, fighting a guy from that country. But, uh, but no, I, I was really happy to get a fight before the end of the year. I was told that wasn't going to happen, so I was very thankful and, and ready to jump on an opportunity. And uh, this was a six-week fight camp, and I was already in shape before it, so it wasn't too long. Man, I'm, I'm ready to go have some fun and do some damage. When are you leaving for Beijing? Uh, one week from today, so next Monday. We'll arrive on Tuesday, fight on Saturday, get home on Sunday. And uh, as far as corners, um, are, are you paying for like an extra one to come out? Because I know sometimes the UFC, I think for these international cards, they only let you bring one cornerman. Yeah, yeah. So the, my, my striking coach and I, we're, we always go fight week. But also my jiu-jitsu coach is going to be tagging along. You know, it's Thanksgiving week, so he's off of work. The gym's closed, so it's kind of perfect. And I usually don't have someone to grapple with all the fight weeks. So now I'll have, you know, good pads to hit, good sparring, and good grappling. I'm really looking forward to this. You know, plus... I don't know if I'm going to bring my phone because I know the internet access is pretty limited there. I don't want anything like downloaded on my software. So we're going to like bring some board games and some cards and, and really have some fun. I'm looking forward to this trip. It'll be kind of like a, like almost like a camping trip, but in China. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. You're coming prepared because uh, that's obviously a pretty long plane ride. Uh, one of the things when you travel internationally is, is the weight cut. You know, obviously uh, when you're on the plane, you retain water pretty well. Are you uh, cutting like more weight ahead of time or, or how are you sort of navigating through that? No, so thankfully I fought in Japan last year and uh, and really didn't have a hard weight cut at all. But I remember when I got to the UFC like like office the first day I was like seven pounds heavier than, and that was a little troubling. But then after like two days it had all whittled down. You know, plus my last few you know weight cuts have been the the, the lowest they've ever been, and uh, and even on this one this one will be a little bit more than my last fight camp. But my last fight camp was like three and a half months long. It was a little too long. And, uh, and so I'll have like an, an average weight cut for this one. That won't be an issue at all. I've never, ever had an issue making 170. Let's talk about your last fight quickly. I know things didn't go your way in that one against Jordan Mean. Uh, what did you take away from that performance that you can bring into this fight? Man, I kind of like reverted back to how I was when I was an early pro and I just wanted to get a knockout, didn't want to score points, didn't want to win rounds, just wanted to stand and bang. And the biggest issue is I played the fight out. I made it something that it wasn't. You know, Dana White was there. It was on his birthday. I was fighting a kickboxer. We got a big like spotlight as the featured prelim. And I thought it was going to be like a glorious like knockdown, drag out, stand up battle. And more so that's what I wanted. And when the fight wasn't going that way, instead of just flipping the switch and changing a game plan, I like stuck to something that wasn't there, and, and by the time I was like ready to accept it, the fight was too late. You know, I got out of that fight with no bumps, no bruises. It was very disheartening. It was very, it was very frustrating. You know, I I wanted that like release, and uh, I don't want to say I lost respect for like MMA, but I lost some respect for like some of the fighters. Like I didn't make it to the UFC to, to not fight. You know, so if it's my job to pull double duty and make it entertaining and stop guys from laying and praying, then so be it. But I also have a very different mindset for this fight. Like uh, when I fought Berkman, I wanted to counter fight, wanted to wrestle, wanted to submit. And uh, and in this last fight, I just wanted a, one, a, a big punch finish, and I'm not going to look for that anymore. Like my main goal for this China fight is to just do damage, not to get a knockout, not to get a submission. It's to just do as much accumulative damage in this fight as I can. And, uh, and I've been training that way. I've been landing way more shots, been scoring takedowns and getting a lot of subs. So I think it will work out better this time. Let's talk about your opponent, Keenan Song, 14-4 uh, and four record. How do you feel like you match up against him? I'm um, good. You know, he's good. He's he's a very technical, very patient counter striker, uh, and he's got good crisp boxing, which is generally not the case for like a more traditional martial arts style guys. But I know he trains out of Jackson's. He's been doing this a while. But I looked at his record very very thoroughly, and uh, even his like fights in the UFC haven't been like the toughest tests. His fights before the UFC. Uh, I think he only fought like one or two good guys. Now, I liked this matchup a lot. Uh, this is a fight, kind of like how I fought Muntasri, just just to pressure him, and I think he sees that coming anyway. And again, just stay in his face, make it ugly, you know, make it dirty, and, and beat him up everywhere. That's the plan. So he needs to be ready for a for a very gritty, very like uh, you know grind grinded out ground out fight on the cage, on the feet, wherever. Have you kept training camp primarily the same as far as training partners, coaches, everything else? No, this one was uh, was different. I've been going to Fortis MMA. I'm actually oh, leaving. Oh no way! Okay, I, I literally yeah. just I just talked to Rashad Coulter maybe uh, you know not oh, that long ago. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll things are really clicking at that gym right now. That's a great move. 
Man, yeah. So Dallas is about a three-hour drive up. So I drive up on Monday, uh, train there in the evening, stay for all of Tuesday, hit their hard sparring on Tuesday, which is just the most difficult training I've ever had in 12 years. Then I drive back home Tuesday night, and then I hit the rest of my fight week back home, all, all the different different gyms around Houston. But uh, yeah, their coach there, he's the one, and the training partners, of course, but their coach, a guy named Safe, he, uh, he makes the training intense and intelligent and, and just awesome, and it's a lot of fun. They have a lot of really good guys in the UFC. I know Jeff Neal's fighting uh, Bilal Muhammad here pretty soon. That's a fantastic matchup. I'll tell you, Jeff Neal's he he's a he he's gonna be top ten. He's gonna be giving the welterweight some serious trouble in the UFC. He's very fun to train with, and they got a lot of really big dudes, really strong guys, and uh, it's it's the toughest training I've ever had in, in all of my time doing this. That's great to hear, and it's so funny. Uh, Rashad also brought up Jeff, and you know he feels like he can be a champion someday. Uh, how is yeah. it getting to work with him in the gym? Because uh, basically, what I've been hearing is that he just does stuff that you don't see with a lot of other fighters. You know what? For as as powerful as he is, he's extremely like sharp and technical, and he's a southpaw. And uh, I actually had a kickboxing match before I got to the UFC, and I fought a southpaw. So I sparred with southpaws for a very long time, and I'm actually more comfortable fighting left-handed fighters. And he's the he's like the main guy who gives me some real trouble. And like usually, like you're either really sharp or you're really strong, and he's both, man. So I'm really excited to see how he does in the UFC. You know, he's already two zero, two finishes. He's really fun to train with. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to his fight. Love training with those guys up there. You know, they have so many really good guys, and the training is just is just awesome. And, like, durability has always been a strong suit of mine. So, like, I can really withstand the hard training, and I get a lot out of it. It was funny. I was saying after uh, after their Tuesday night hard sparring sessions, anything else is easier. Like, I could grapple for two hours. I could run five miles. Nothing compares to uh, to the hard sparring. So it really puts things in really good perspective. You mentioned you want to do damage in this fight. How do you see this fight unfolding? Man, I, uh, I've been drilling a lot of takedown stuff. I know how I go fight time. I'm thinking it's going to be standing most of the time uh, and just really you know, making sure I don't let him get comfortable with his range. But, but I'm not sure. He's been pretty consistent in all of his tape, so uh, we'll see if they're going to change some things up. But uh, I know he's a pretty big guy. He's pretty strong, and he's got power in his hands. But every welterweight has power in their hands, so I'm not like putting too many like you know, too much stress on that. But, uh, but man, I just want to wanna land as much volume as possible. And, uh, and then if, you know, if he's hurt, go after the finish, but not just try to swing for the fences, not for this one. There's been a lot of news lately in MMA right now. The first uh, one, obviously, is that the flyweight division is, is no longer. Uh, just your reaction when you heard that and uh, just your thoughts as a, as a UFC fighter. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was interesting to see. Uh, it was cool. Like, like Matt Schnell, I know, was a flyweight, and, you know, he was given the offer to fight at 35. But, like, Roberto Sanchez, he's at a Drax gym. I know they cut him. You know, this is a brutal sport. You know, you know, you win, it's the best night of your life. You lose, it's the worst night of your life. I, I don't think there's a lot of sympathy to be had in MMA. So, you know, you just got to kind of roll with the punches and, and, and find your openings elsewhere. You know, it was surprising, but not, ex you know, extremely shocking. And your reaction to the to the Yair Rodriguez uh, knockout this past weekend, what, what, you don't see that in MMA too often. No, I, uh, I, I don't even know if I can throw that elbow. Like, my shoulders are too tight. I don't think I could ever time somebody – overshooting position that much that was the most technical skilled insane knockout i've ever seen and, and again 12 years of doing this that was awesome and it wasn't like lucky and it wasn't an accident he he threw that specifically to land it. i just I, I still can't wrap my head around it man that was awesome to see really cool really cool knockout this is a really cool fight. November 24th, UFC Fight Night 141. Uh, Alex, always uh, great catching up with you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Yeah, so everything's pretty much the same. Alex Moron MMA on like uh, Instagram and, and, and Twitter and stuff. And then, uh, you know, sponsor wise, just UFC, love fighting for the UFC, love the Reebok stuff. And then a uh, big shout outs to my team, Gracie Baja, the Woodlands, all the gyms I train at around Houston. And a huge shout out to the guys at Fortis MMA. You know, they really took me in and uh, give me a lot of hard work and, uh, and a lot of love, man. I really enjoy that place. And I'd love to bring the home or the win not only back to Houston, but back to Texas, back to Dallas. You know, get that win for everybody. That'd be awesome.